welcome to Board Game Breakfast. Now you may notice two things. One, the intro seems to be the same as it was last week. And two, this is Tuesday, not Monday, you slacker vessel. Well, both those reasons are the same, is that I was at Gen Con for a week. I, was at, I went to Gen Con last Tuesday and was there and came home yesterday. And so that took up a ton of time. There's quite a lot of stuff to do. But what a Gen Con. I'm gonna, they haven't released the numbers yet, but I would not be surprised if it was close to 60,000 people. It was gigantic, it was amazing, it seemed like everybody in the board game industry was there. It seemed like there was tons of board games released, and it was just crazy, it was exhausting, it was exhilarating and fantastic. And one of the things that we'll be doing this week um, is releasing our show that we recorded live at Gen Con. And I'll talk a little bit about more about that later. I would like to remind you that if you like just the audio version of this show, you can get that at DiceTowerAudio.com. And yes, I know last week's, because of Gen Con, I didn't get it up, but it's up there now, along with uh, Sam and Z's Top 100 of All Times. Okay, well, <laughs> time for the news. Folks, amazingness. There's so much news, and I'm not going to give it to you all, and I recommend that you go to Dice Tower News because of all the news that's there. Um, and thank you to all. We added 1,000 followers to our Twitter feed, Dice Tower underscore news, and we post it and post it. I had a whole team of people helping me, and I think we posted every nick and corner of Gen Con. Tried to get lots of the cool things that you can see, lots of great pictures and things there, and it's exciting and we'll continue to be putting the news up at Dice Tower News. So go there, subscribe, and you even have a chance each week to win a $10 gift certificate from Cool Stuff. But, with there being so much news, some news stood out. And for me, the one piece of news that stood out way far, more above anything else, by like a mile! <laughs> and that's Imperial Assault from Fantasy Flight. They announced that. Essentially, it's Star Wars mixed with Descent. Wow. No. You already know I'm a huge fan of Descent. Love it. I think it's fantastic. And Star Wars plus Descent would be cool in and of itself, but also the box Imperial Assault is going to double. It's going to have two games. It's going to have Star Wars uh, where you go through and one person plays the Imperials and another person plays the Rebels as they get better and better and go through with Wookiees and, and, and you'll meet Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader and the different characters and the game's going to come out with lots of different character packs and, oh, you know, okay, exciting but also it's gonna be a, a ground battle. You can play a miniatures game with these where you'll be able to take the Imperials against the Rebels. And the game has comes with wonderful miniatures with an ATST and uh, with some weird aliens and with a Wookiee and it's really neat. And they told me they're gonna be releasing lots of stuff for this game. And of course we already knew that. And so this is gonna be the most fantastic game of all time. Well, maybe not, but you have to admit, I'm very excited about it. And it is not a reskin of Descent. The folks who've played it, I have not yet played it, but I'm going to try it out, if possible, as soon as I can. Um, and it's not coming out till quarter one of 2015, but aren't we excited? But anyhow, um, uh, people said it's very, it, it, it's, it's similar to Descent, but it's different. There's a lot of different things. It has a very strong emphasis on a storyline, so I'm just excited about that. Um, they also announced, man, there they announced a, a whole pile of things, and so we'll just touch on a few of those. Scum and Villainly, Villainly from uh, the X-Wing. Now, X-Wings have three factions. you got Imperials, Rebels, and Scum and Villainy. Uh, Scum and Villainy is going to have a bunch of new ships, including IG-88 ship, which is exciting. But they'll also have cards for some of the older ships, so you'll be able to take Boba Fett and be able to stick him in this third faction. He won't just be on the Imperial side. They also announced that, that Battle Lore, no Battle Lore expansion is coming soon, but one is coming, and a new Battle Lore Command game, which will be out for the iOS. This sounds very interesting, and the graphics they showed looked quite good for this. And an expansion for Eldritch Horror Mountains of Madness. Now, this is exciting because it's a big box expansion with a lot of cool stuff in it, but what I really liked was how they talked about how they're going to focus their expansions so that they don't overwhelm. Like when you play Arkham Horror with all the expansions, it was just everywhere. With uh, Eldritch, you will play, and they said it kind of organically grows, so you might play and it will say, pull this board out and use it now. So you pull that board out and then you use parts of that expansion. So you don't have to have everything all over the place. And so I'm really excited about that, not to mention Eldritch is such a great game. Without a doubt, Fantasy Flight made the biggest splash at Gen Con with news. But 
as in terms of published games, the question I was most asked at Gen Con from people was, what is the hot game? What's the hottest game here? And as of now, and as of then, my answer is the same. I really can't tell you. I don't even think it's between two or three. I think there was about 10 super hot games at the convention, and it's hard to tell because some games only had 100 copies in, and sure, they went fast, but would they be bigger? But the games that were being buzzed, was it King of New York from Yellow? Possibly. Was it Dead of Winter from Plaid Hat? Uh, was it any of the games Asmodee had from Abyss to uh, Lords of Zidit to Cash and Guns 2? Was it uh, Sheriff of Nottingham? I like to think so, but uh, was it Shadowrun Crossfire? Was it uh, Deadlands uh, Doomtown Reloaded from AEG? Um, and I'm not even mentioning all the games. Uh, the, the, there was so many games from so many companies that were big, major releases there. Many games sold out. And so I couldn't tell you the best game of the con. But I can tell you there was a lot of good ones. Uh, all five tribes from Days of Wonder and yeah, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, CGE has announced a expansion for Tashkoar Core coming out soon. Here's a picture of a snow giant. Looks really cool. Uh, CEG was at Gen Con, one of their guys, and he showed me a new game that they're coming out with soon called Alchemist, which, man, it's so cool, folks. It uses the iOS or, or apps in, in such a unique way where each game, different elements combine to make things, but you don't know what they are, and it will change from the game to game, and your app randomizes it. You take a picture of two elements, and it will tell you what those two elements combine to be. It's a cool idea, and it worked so coolly when I saw it in person. Very excited about that. Uh, one of the things I really thought was cool at Gen Con was a Pandemic Survival. This is a tournament style that they run where essentially everyone's playing the same game uh, because the, the city cards come up, things come up in the same order for everybody, and how you deal with it, though, is going to be different. And whoever wins first um, in turn order or whoever survives the longest is the winner. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. I'm so excited I'm dropping stuff. Okay, let's see. Castle Panic has a birthday kit you can get. That's pretty interesting. Why not? Uh, Castle Panic, good cooperative game. So then you get balloons and stuff. Uh, Upper Deck announced Versus is coming back. 2011, they announced Versus was dead. But it is not. It's coming back. Exact format, I don't know, but they did have a few hundred copies at Gen Con uh, for people to try out and see the new version. So <laughs> you might see a review of that soon. IGN has announced that they picked up Wildcatters, which was a pretty heavy Euro game that came out last year at Essen, and also Fire and Axe, a Viking saga. Uh, that's a game that people have been wanting to come out for a long time. I believe Z-Man had it initially. So Fire and Axe, very cool. I think the fans of that will be happy. Whew. Man, folks, and that's just a portion of the news. Uh <laughs> This is Scott Nicholson and welcome to the Ivory Dice Tower. Today I'm going to wrap up my talking about game design by talking about designing applied games using this model that I've created. Now this model, the, the issue with this model is that it doesn't get at the heart of what you need to do with an applied game. With an applied game, your goal is to bring about a learning outcome. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to create a situation where someone can actually be changed, where they can be transformed. And so you need to think about that first with the audience. Who's the audience? And what are the learning outcomes we're trying to bring about? And how does the game help bring about that learning outcomes? And there may be a larger context. It may be this, that people play a game, and then they discuss the game, and then they reflect upon the game, because it's actually through that reflection where they learn, not through the playing of the game. The reflection is the key part. Or what does a teacher or facilitator do to help people reflect? But thinking about up front, what's the learning outcome I'm trying to bring about? That's going to help you think about how all these other things bring that about. What theme helps me reach that learning outcome? What mechanisms helps me do that? What components will lead to that? What player experience leads to that learning outcome? And it's really important to think about this stuff up front. And it's also important to think about context. If you're going to use this game and try to sell it for classroom use, then the game needs to be able to be taught and completed in 45 minute chunks, because that's what a classroom can handle. So you need to think about up front with that audience, you need to think about context. Where do you see the game actually being used out there? And when it's actually going to be used, you need to make sure it's designed for the appropriate constraints. Because if you make this great game that takes five hours to play, it's not going to be able to be used in the classroom. So think about your learning outcomes, think about your context, and think about your audience. And then go in with theme, mechanism, component, or 
player experience. Start with one, but move to the other three and figure how do I always build towards that learning outcome? Because then when you're done, you're going to have a game that does help you to reach that learning outcome rather than just an activity that's just been slapped on. And students can tell that and they're not going to be nearly as engaged. So that's enough for now. What will I talk about next time? I don't know. Bye bye. Suzanne here with this week's featured board game app. Star Realms took Origins by Storm and is one of my favorite games of 2014. The app version for both iOS and Android is out now, so let's take a quick look at how this combative deck builder plays in the digital world. From one of the designers of Ascension and a Magic the Gathering Pro Tour Hall of Famer, Star Realms shows its roots. At its heart, it's a mechanically straightforward deck builder. Its sparkle comes from the player interaction. Instead of collecting cards to collect bigger cards, in Star Realms, you build your armada to eliminate your opponent through combat points. Yeah, some people don't like the direct conflict in a deck builder, but I think it's a blast. Star Realms has a nice set of features including three different levels of AI, multi-platform online play, pass and play, and an interactive tutorial. The card gallery is a nice touch and kind of makes up for the fact that the rulebook is just a web link. But best of all, there's a solo play campaign mode that pits you against different enemies. Let me tell you, it's a challenge, but really fun. The art individually is beautiful, but I don't use it to tell the cards apart because it kind of blends together for me. And it's definitely better on a computer or tablet since the card text is unreadable without zooming on smaller devices. Thankfully, the screen interaction is pretty intuitive, but it is sensitive and a mistap can lead you to take or skip an action accidentally. For an out-of-the-gate app, Star Realms is great. I don't have a lot of complaints. It's more of a new features list for next version. To make the app really easy to sync into, it needs a quick rematch button, the ability to delete completed games, to cancel a match request, and most of all, an undo button. Not all the features I've discussed are included in the free base game. The one-time $5 in-app purchase unlocks online and pass and play, as well as adds additional campaign challenges and AIs. But you buy it once, and it unlocks it for any device or computer linked to your account. Upon release, Star Realms is a great app. And once they add a few more features, it's going to be one of the best out there. Give it a try. Hey, Cody, how's it going? Hey, I'm looking forward to game night tonight. Hey, Sean, I am really sorry. Something came up, and I won't be there tonight. You can't make it? Oh, Cody, come on! You promised, Cody! Look, I'm sorry. It's just something I can't get out of. Alright, alright, Cody! You know what? If that's the way you're gonna be, Cody, you know what? I curse you. I put a hex on your dice from the games you're playing that you always roll low rolls. Unless the high ones are crappy, then th that's what you're gonna roll. You're gonna roll high or low depending on what is the least advantageous that I hex thee! Sean, relax. It's a joke. I'll be there tonight. Are you serious? You're kidding? Cody, I can't, I can't take back a hex, Cody. Cody, we're supposed to be playing a cooperative game tonight and I had hexed you. I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you were joking and now I've hexed my friend. I'm sorry. Productions this week, a lot of stuff. As soon as I have this show posted, I will be working on the Dice Tower live show that we did uh, at Gen Con on Friday night. It was so fun. The room was packed. I would guess we had close to 350 people there. That was just super, and I'm very pleased that all those folks uh, came out. We had to turn people away, and if you got turned away, I'm so sorry. Hopefully Gen Con will give us a bigger room next year. Um, but we're going to count this one as the uh, Dice Tower musical that we promised in, um, uh, way back in the year. And so, for example, gather round. Gather round. 
Now gather round children, I'll tell you a tale and one that might make you sad. Explaining the reasons my war game was doomed the day I became a dad. <laughs> so you never know. <laughs> anyway, it was so fun. So that will be coming this week. Also, the next two videos in Sam and Z's Top 100 of All Time, I believe we'll be doing uh, 80 to 71 and 70 to 61. So very exciting there. Um, and... Let's see, uh, lots of reviews. Now, folks realize that there was so many reviews. I think uh, from Gen Con, I brought home, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna guess 60, 70 games. And everyone's gonna want all of them reviewed at one time. We will do our best. I actually have some reviews that will be going up this week for some of the hot games. Uh, Dan Kang and Ryan Metzler, we're, we're trying to coordinate so we can cover different games and get those out. But we're not gonna get them all out as fast as you guys want them, but we will do our best. So look, this week I think, You'll see Abyss. I think you'll see um, maybe Dead of Winter, Sheriff of Nottingham, Lords of Zidit, Cashing Guns 2. You know, it's a lot of asthma day because they got the games to us early. Um, Battle of Kemble's Cascade from Z-Man. So it's very exciting. Lots of cool reviews. Stay tuned on this channel. Also, again, all the D Dice Tower Network shows at DiceTowerNetwork.com. And at, in case you you don't want, aren't interested, if you want to see what many of the folks on the Dice Tower Network look like, the Dice Tower Live show, we had as many people as we could get from the different shows there. So, whew, a lot of things going on. Let's move on. Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise with the next installment in my Meeples for Sheepish Peoples series, where I talk about the social activity of board games in the lives of people who aren't socially outgoing. <laughs> now, not every socially adverse gamer wants to broaden their horizons and meet more gamers, which is fine, but for those who do, it can be really rewarding, because while being alone isn't necessarily a bad thing, there, there's nothing worse than being lonely. So, the first step in meeting new gamers is, oddly enough, meeting new people. Sounds simple, but it can be easier said than done. Even when one does muster up the courage to attend an event, it can easily turn into several hours of just standing on the sidelines, looming, too timid to approach others to participate in a game. So, how can you prevent this outcome? Well, this first suggestion may come as a surprise, but practice. Yes. Find an environment where you can increase your comfort zone in small, comfy little steps. For example, the game group that I started began with an average of five attendees, and even then, the first couple of meetings, I felt exceptionally awkward. But after just a few meetings, as we got to know each other better, I became a lot more comfortable. Then I began spreading the word for new members again for the group, then paused while I got to know those new members and got comfortable with them, and then continued repeating the process. Now the group has grown to 70 members, with an average of a dozen regulars attending the game days that I host. This slow growth has allowed me to acclimate myself to the new members at a pace that's less overwhelming. Plus, the friends that I've made in my game group also serve as anchors of comfort at larger events that we attend. But what if one of your buddies can't accompany you to one of those larger conventions? Or what if they're just as uncomfortable in crowds as you are? Well, next time, I'll discuss several practical tips that I employ at larger gatherings to help myself avoid the temptation of avoiding the congregation. Oh, hi, Internet. Nice to see you again. That is what's called a compliment. It's what people say to each other to be polite. Compliments are just one of the many things that separates people from the Vikings. Here at Snakes and Lattes, we get a surprising number of Viking savages playing our games. Here are some of the things they do. They ignore the people in front of them in favor of their phones. When it's Stark's turn, uh -huh. everybody dies. Yeah, no That's just the way yeah. it goes. <laughs> it Spoiler alert, by the way. Game. Wait. Uh, the hey. okay. Are you on the phone? Excuse me, I'm on the phone. You're a, no, I know. You're on the... Yeah, I'm trying to teach you a 30-page rule book and you're on the phone. Oh, 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 no. oh, okay. Seriously, what sort of Viking does that? Another thing you shouldn't do 
is just pour the contents of the game back in the box willy-nilly when you're done. Unless the game belongs to you, the owner of the game probably doesn't want it looking like a bunch of Vikings had their way with it before just jamming the lid back on. I, wait, what are you... What are you... What? What? What are you doing? No! If the box liner has sockets in it, the exact shape and size of the components, you can be Viking well sure that each Viking piece has its own Viking spot. That's all the time we have today. And remember to tip your server, you Viking Vikings. No Game of Thrones were actually harmed during the making of this video. That copy was a biohazard that needed to be put out of its misery. Thank you. Little boy came up to me at Gen Con and he said, Tom, are you famous or something? And <laughs> I said, only within these walls. And even then, not very much. I go outside and nobody knows who I am. Uh, but the fact is, it was a fantastic Gen Con. We had a little booth there, and the amount of people who came by and said hi was probably a thousand or so. It was amazing, folks. And I want to say a big thank you to each of those of you who came by. And it got me thinking because I thought, wow, you know, there were points, and I've said in all my videos, and I mean it, that I will stop and talk to you. Don't hesitate to come up and say hi no matter what I'm doing. I will amend that to say if I'm crossing a street, perhaps that's not the best time to stop and talk. Um, but for the, for the most part, and, and lots of people did that this year, they said, hey, you told us to stop you, and I'm glad, okay? That's fantastic. But it got me to thinking, what if somebody was really famous, like Will Wheaton or some of these other people, what it must be like for them to be constantly stopped and talked to? And I, I could see how that could be exhausting. You know, there were times where I wanted to run through the hall from one end to the other, and people stopped me. And I said, you know what, Vassal, you ask people to stop you. You will talk to everybody. So I did. Fantastic and fun. I am not complaining. But it got me thinking, what if you really were famous and people stopped you and talked every single feed or so? You wouldn't be able to enjoy yourself. And then, man, that must be kind of tough. It also comes through sometimes with emails. I got back from Gen Con, and I had about 1,000 emails to go through. And I spent hours going through all those. And I'll get the, the, the more the Dice Tower becomes popular, the more I get emails where people say, hey, can you recommend a game for me? Oh, I like this, this, and this game, and I don't like this, this, and this game. And can you tell me which games I should get? And detailed description. Or they'll say, here's four games. Can you please write out a contrast and comparison between them? Or, hey, how are you doing? I want to start a dialogue with you. And that's great and wonderful to communicate with people. But sometimes you sit there and go, Man, am I shortchanging people because I can only write a short reply to each person. Otherwise, that's all you, I would ever do. Even at Gen Con, I felt like many times I talked to people for a few minutes and then I went to the next person because I didn't want people to have to stand around forever. But at the same time, I didn't want anyone to feel like they were being left out. Because honestly, I really, really believe that gaming is about people. Okay? So that's so much more important to me than anything else. But... How do I ration out the time each person? When I say thank you and I go, am I being rude? And so I would encourage people, for those, there are many, many people who are quote unquote famous. When you go to conventions that, and, and many more famous than me, the designers and the publishers, and they're very busy. So when you go talk to them, they're gonna be, try to be friendly to you, at least most of them are. And they're going to try to talk to you as much as they can, but they probably have many others that they need to talk to also. So just keep that in mind as you go through. Now with me, I am not trying to, to say anything. Please email me, please talk to me. But if my replies are shorter and you say, wow, Basil was kind of short in that email. Well, it's because I have so very many to go through and I don't want to shortchange everybody. So I try to shorten them all down a little bit. And also, I talk an excessive amount, so hopefully sometimes on my shows and things, I can answer your things in great detail. For example, if you say, Tom, what do you think of Kemet, for example? I would say, well, why don't you check out my Kemet review? Or if you say, what do you think about Kemet or Cicades, which one's better? Why don't you watch both reviews, and I, I talk about that a little bit, and, and compare them yourselves. But please email, and please talk, but keep in mind, sometimes people will be overwhelmed. All that being said, 
again, we were so humbled and so excited to see how many people came by the booth. We were so humbled and so excited to see that our show was not only filled, but overfilled and overbooked and people kept getting turned away. And wow, folks, it was so exciting. And I was so pleased so many people came and talked, especially about last week's board game breakfast. And I kept telling people, I hope that when I meet you in person, I'm the same guy that you see here on the video. And I hope that comes across. But it was great. I played, I think, three or four games at Gen Con. Uh, but I met thousands of people. And if I had my druthers, meeting the people is more important than playing the games. It's time to dig in and play the games now. And obviously, that's what this channel is about. But you guys are the best. And I appreciate each and every one of you. All right. Well, it's almost time to wrap this up. was the first game from Daisemi Games. Carnival is basically a card game, and I didn't expect main components, but when I opened the box, I found components. So let's open the box. There are cards, old-timey wooden dice, thick ticket tokens, and a nice action selection board. In a card game! So much, so much going on, folks. And now it's post Gen Con. What does post Gen Con mean? Well, it means that we need to get ready for what's coming next. What's coming next? Well, I have a small convention I'm going to in September, Cosmic Con, all about Cosmic Encounter, up at the Fantasy Flight headquarters. And then after that in October is Essen. And Essen has the most game releases released of any game convention anywhere. So I mean, not all of them are fantastic, but I'm sure quite a few of them will be. So we have to start prepping for that, too. So that and all these reviews, we will get to work on this. Why am I still talking to y'all? I need to get to work. See you next time. I'm Tom Bassel, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.